Hi, I'm Mary Ambonetti and I am in my fall cutting garden. Now these are some raised beds. I grow, as you can see, the dahlias here. I have flocks that have finished blooming. But now that it's fall, it's time to put your perennials and your cutting garden to bed. Now you can see I mix in flowers and vegetables all the time. I've already removed and, and pulled out, the, dug into the ground and pulled out my tomatoes and my squash. I'm going to leave the dahlias because they're still blooming and I'm not going to cut them to the ground until uh, we have a light frost that turns all their leaves yellow. But what am I doing with the stakes in my hands and the pruners? Well, let me show you what I am going to do today in my cutting garden to get it ready for winter. Come on. Okay, so these tall brown stalks are from the lilies that bloomed in my cutting garden earlier in the summer. So. In general, here's, here's a rule to live by. If it's brown, cut it down. So the lilies have turned brown. That means the leaves are no longer making any food to store in the bulb below. So I could go ahead and cut these off. And then, because the lily underneath here, I have a tendency to add more plants in the spring before the lilies are up, I'm going to mark them. I'm going to mark them with a stake that says, there is a lily here, do not dig it up. And because it's just a cutting garden and not that ornamental, it's okay that I have these little stakes sticking out. They're telling me not to cut it out. So now when I'm cutting off these lily stems, rather than carry these over to the compost pile, what I'm gonna do is something called the chop and drop. I have chopped them and now I just drop them and let the cut stalks, the brown leaves, sit around the plants to act as a natural mulching material. Now also you see back here this nice green plant, it's not brown, I don't have to cut it down, but I'm going to go ahead and reach over and see how easily the stems of this phlox. This is garden phlox, it gets quite tall, it's done blooming, uh, and so it's still adding because the leaves are green. It's still working to add nutrients to the roots. But these flocks have been here a long time. I need to divide them. They're perfectly healthy uh, without adding any more nutrients. And it's so easy to just snap them off at ground level. It's a quick way to kind of clean up the garden bed in the fall. And then you have a choice. You can either take these to the compost pile or you can do the lazy gardening way, the chop and drop. Now the thing about the chop and drop is it leaves you with a rather messy looking garden. In a cutting garden like this that has a raised bed, it's quite all right that, the, you know, that I'm leaving all this green material down at the base of the plants. There's one plant that I do not do the chop and drop to. Let me tell you about that next over here. It's hosta. All right, so here is my hosta plants. And the hostas are in the more shaded part of my cutting garden. I have a, a, an arbor over here with clematis growing on it. But I don't do the chop and drop with the hosta leaves. The reason is because here in the Pacific Northwest, I have rather damp garden and it's full of slugs and snails. So what I do instead, you can see the hosta leaves are starting to turn yellow. I will cut these leaves off at ground level add them to the compost pile, but I won't leave them near the hosta plants because I don't want the tiny little baby slugs and slug eggs that are going to overwinter in the hostas. So I'm going to just set these hosta greens aside. They're going to go right into the compost. It's okay to have slugs in your compost pile. Slugs help break down you know, all the green material, and it is certainly okay not to leave the hosta greens behind. So. I'm going to clean all this up, keeping all the leaves away from these hosta stumps so that I'll have less. In fact, what I often do in the fall, I'll go ahead and move the mulch a little bit. What I'm trying to do is see if there's any little slugs in there. Hostas are very cold tolerant. If I scrape the soil away a little bit looking for those little bit of a slug eggs that overwinter, I'm still going to be okay. This way I won't be encouraging more slugs. I'm taking all the slugs to the compost pile. So there you are, three ways to get your cutting garden and your perennials ready for winter. You cut back your lilies, 
and mark them. Um, you can snap off your tall garden flocks at the base and you can decide if you want to do the chop and drop and leave your leaves in your garden as a natural mulch or if you want to do like what I did with the hosta, cut the perennials back, remove all that foliage and bring it to the compost pile. This has been Mary Ann Bonetti with Easy Answers for Great Gardens.